These two creatures normally live a hidden life in the deep sea. This little shrimp here is about to be eaten, but it has a very neat trick to distract its uh, ugly fish. And that is that it can secrete a protein called the luciferase, the luciferase molecules, which once in the seawater generate a flash of blue light. This blue light, it's called bioluminescence, actually distracts the ugly fish long enough for the shrimp to get away. Now, in the next few minutes, <coughs> I would like to uh, explain to you how, using synthetic biology, we can use the protein that generates this blue light to develop a very simple test for uh, diagnostics of infectious diseases. I'm actually a chemist by training, and chemists like to make new molecules that didn't exist before in nature. Uh, chemistry is actually unique as a scientific discipline to use synthesis to understand the molecular world, or as Richard Feynman put it, if I cannot create it, I cannot understand it. Chemical synthesis has also been very important for uh, society in the last two centuries. It's generated fantastic new materials, drugs, as well as some uh, also very nasty environmental problems. I believe that biology is now at the same point in time as chemistry was at the end of the 19th century. Because for a long time, biology has been a science that tries to understand and describe the natural world around us, ranging from ecosystems to cells. But the revolution that has taken place over the last 50 years in molecular biology means that we now know many of the molecular components that life is based on. We sequence the human genome, we know the structure of thousands of proteins, and we know most basic biochemical reactions. So we're now at a point in time that we can think we can use these components that life is made of and try to create new biological devices, ranging from proteins to cells and even organisms. Now, in my research group, we try to make new proteins. We're protein engineers. And to make a protein really from scratch is still an enormous challenge. But evolution, through millions of years of evolution, has generated a huge collection of proteins with a very wide variety of functions. And the number of proteins for which we now know the structure has risen exponentially. So, it's now over 100,000, and all these proteins are at our disposal. We can use them as building blocks to create new proteins with new functions. I'd like to illustrate that uh, by giving you one example from our own research, where um, our aim was to develop a very simple test to detect uh, the presence of antibodies in a drop of blood. Antibodies are these uh, yellow, Y-shaped proteins uh, that are in the blood, and they act as the gatekeepers of the immune system, the eyes and ears of our immune system. So they detect when a microorganism or a virus invades and then tax it for destruction. Now, the antibodies that are generated are specific for a certain disease. So they are called biomarkers, excellent biomarkers that you can use to detect infectious diseases or autoimmune diseases, etc. Now, the detection of antibodies in a laboratory, in a hospital, is actually a solved problem. But it requires sophisticated equipment, it's expensive and time-consuming. So we ask ourselves, can we make a test that can be done by everyone, everywhere? Can we make a sensor protein that, in the presence of a specific antibody, generates a certain color of light? And that's where our little shrimp comes in. So what we decided to do is take this protein that uh, makes this blue light from the shrimp, connected to another protein that's green fluorescent from another marine organism via a long linker, and do it in such a way that in the absence of antibody, these are held together by two other proteins from yet another organism, yeast. So the blue light that's normally produced is now transferred to the green protein, and it emits green light. Now, if the antibody binds, it actually gets the two proteins apart. So the blue light can no longer be transferred to the green protein, and you generate blue light. So this is basically a molecular traffic light with two colors, blue and green, which kind of indicate the presence of a specific antibody. And the beauty of this system, we think, is that this light, in principle, can be detected just by the camera of your mobile phone. It's the only piece of equipment that you would need. So that's the dream that we are currently working on. We're trying to develop this principle, really develop it in a very simple uh, paper-based essay where you could put a drop of blood on a piece of paper or, or saliva, and then based on the color of the light that's emitted, you can decide whether you have a certain disease. It's also a little bit where my expertise ends and my questions begin. So a very specific question in this case is how can we uh, translate this basic research 
to real applications, for example, the developing world, really make this happen. Uh, more generally, um, what about patentability of these issues? Yeah, so synthetic biology, should we pursue this kind of open, uh, open source platform ID where everybody can use all these building blocks? Is that the way to go? That is something I would like to discuss. Thank you.